Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the World Comedy Tour from Melbourne. <laughs> this isn't uh, my first foray into show business. I used to play the tuba. Yeah. <laughs> my dad sent me off to learn it when I was 10. He obviously didn't think I was being bullied enough at school. <laughs> thought giving me a conspicuous wind instrument to carry should give me the edge, you see? Because <laughs> your parents want the best for you, don't they? You know, his, my dad's going, uh, my son's not getting his fair share of beatings. <laughs> Have you thought of sending him to school with a pudding bowl haircut? <laughs> yes, but it's not giving me the results I require. <laughs> How about a tie on a piece of elastic? <laughs> yes, but he's impervious to neck pain. <laughs> How about the tuba? Will it be heavy enough to stop him fleeing an angry mob? <laughs> yes, it will. Cancel the ballet lessons, love. <laughs> we found our man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you know the tuba? It's, it's, it's the only instrument you wear. They, they sort of lowered it onto you. If, if you're the age of 10, you look like a small factory. <laughs> pumping out dodgy notes. <laughs> of which you only get three with the tuba, and two of them can only be heard by whales. <laughs> There's whales going. Is that three blind mice? <laughs> what about the recorder? You would play the recorder, wouldn't you? Yeah? yeah? Remember the recorder? Actually, nobody played the recorder like that, did they? <laughs> Even the teacher couldn't play the recorder like that. You have to go, do you remember the recorder? <laughs> <laughs> and then the big finale with the thumb at the end. Your mum would be like that. Well done, son. <laughs> your dad would be like that. Because <laughs> that's your mum, blind encouragement, your dad, withering reality. <laughs> Taking you to one side going, son, you're quite possibly the worst bloody recorder player I've ever had the misfortune to hear. <laughs> if you weren't my own flesh and blood, I'd set the dog on you. <laughs> now, if I see that recorder at your lips again, I'll shove it up your arse. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some of the finest comedians working on earth today here tonight for your entertainment. Welcome onto the stage, the first act from England, Mr. Simon Evans. Thank you very much. That very temperate welcome. <laughs> no, seriously, actually, I prefer that sort of welcome, actually. Yeah, yeah. Some crowds you come out to, they get rather hysterical. There's whooping. <laughs> I don't like whooping. <laughs> it's not the Jerry Springer show, is it? There's nothing here to compete with the visceral thrill of watching two grossly overweight women charging at each other like rutting rhinos. <laughs> as they've discovered their brother is cheating on both of them, or whatever it is. <laughs> Mine are more modest pleasures, more the sort of grim smile you might allow yourself when you see that somebody's milk has begun to leak in their shopping. So. <laughs> One other thing I should sort out as well by now, a few people are usually thinking this is all very well, but where are his eyes? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Uh, yeah. I do have eyes. <laughs> there we are. Kind of uh, thank you. You're too kind, really. Uh, a <laughs> round of applause for having eyes. It's, uh, <laughs> makes it seem like some sort of Victorian freak show, really. <laughs> it? They are fully functioning eyes, and I'd heard most of the insults by the time I was about eight years old, I think. Uh, piggy little eyes, eyes like pistols in the snow. <laughs> Seen bigger eyes on a potato. <laughs> Mother could be very cruel. <laughs> Still, she's in a home now. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> At least I assume she's still there. The direct debit is still going through. So, uh, <laughs> I check my statements once a month. What else can you do? <laughs> One day there'll be a refund, I suppose, and that'll be that. <laughs> no point in getting sentimental about it, is there? <laughs> 
So I'll tell you a bit about myself. I live in London, uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, you may know London. I don't know if you'll know it well enough to know the area of King's Cross. It's fairly notorious uh, in the UK for being a, a run-down sort of area, a lot of homeless on the streets, which is very sad. It's tragic, we're all to blame, and so on and so forth. Something really must be done. <laughs> I haven't noticed many homeless on the streets of Melbourne. Uh, what do you do? Just hose them into the ocean on a daily basis or something? <laughs> Quality of tramp has definitely declined in the UK. I, uh, when I was a kid, there was a song, a, the musical of the 1930s. You probably heard this song, Burlington Bertie. It was about a tramp in the west end of London. It went, I'm Burlington Bertie, I rise at 10.30 and saunter along like a toff. I walk down the strand with my gloves on my hand, then I walk down again with them off. That's the spirit. <laughs> Not like today, I'm Burlington Bertie. I rise at 10.30 and piss up the wall of a bank. <laughs> Walk down the strand with my cock in my hand. You're lucky if I don't... Well, you get the picture. You know, so. <laughs> Very dubious about that old business with the war. I don't... The weapons of mass destruction still seem very elusive. We'll never know for sure. I must say, I would have thought if Saddam Hussein did have weapons of mass destruction, you would think a war would be the perfect opportunity to use them. I, don't... <laughs> I always felt that point was glossed over somewhat, you know? especially a war with America. I mean, what else are you waiting for? Is it, is it a bit like the best China? You never know quite when to get it out. <laughs> oh, America are coming to war. Shall we use the weapons of mass... No, let's save them for a special occasion. <laughs> Certainly Hans Blix couldn't find any. He was out there for years, couldn't find a sausage. Oh, well, Muslim country, probably quite difficult to find a sausage, I suppose. <laughs> Felt very sorry for Hans Blix, though, because, you know, it was a very high-profile attempt. He was the head of UN Weapons Inspection Team, I'm sure you remember, and a difficult job at the best of times. It must have been made more so for him by the fact that he's a man called Hans who's looking for arms. <laughs> That must just be embarrassing, must it? We're going to the Imperial Palace in Baghdad. Hello, I am Hans. Where are the arms? <laughs> Thank you very much for listening there, Melvin. You've been delightful. I've been Thank you. Cheers. Brilliant. Simon Evans. Thank you. Simon Evans. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a man who is as big in the UK as he is in his home country, Australia. A five-star comedian, Mr. Adam Hills. Hello. Uh, pleasure to be on the World Comedy Tour uh, with so many different uh, accents and languages. I, love, I, was in, um, I was in Paris last year. Oh, yeah. I was in France. I took the train from London. It was that guy, one that goes under the, the Channel Tunnel and then arrives in France. And as we arrived in France, this mobile phone went off. And I just heard this woman answer and just go, Hello? He goes, Hello, Susan. Yes, we've just arrived in France. It was gorgeous, beautiful. My goodness, it was really beautiful. <laughs> yes, if you could tell Nigel back at the office to send the pack through by seven, that'd be splendid. OK, ciao. Oh. Uh, Actually, she, she probably didn't hang up. <laughs> Ciao. Oh, beep, oh. It occurred to me that half the people on that train don't speak English as a first language. Half the people on that train were hearing a totally foreign language. For the first time in my life, I wondered what it must sound like to hear English spoken when you don't speak it. Because I can't speak French. If I was trying to speak French, I'd just make French noises. There'd be a French person talking on the train, I'd be looking and go, oh, the phone went off and this woman went, I don't know what that last bit was. <laughs> I really hope French people do that. I'd love to think there are French people on that train who went home to their families and went, oh, I was on the train today, this mobile phone went off. Uh, all I heard was this English woman saying, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what I do is one step more ignorant than that. When I try and impersonate French, I make French noises and then drop in an occasional French word that has nothing to do with the conversation. Like if someone had approached me on the street today and asked me for directions in French, I had no idea what they were saying. But I'd be telling you, going, oh, this guy came up to me today and went, uh, qu'est-ce que maman zama ma croissante? <laughs> qu'est-ce que maman zama ma je ne sais quoi ménager toi? Hein? <laughs> qu'est-ce que maman zama François Mitterrand? <laughs> Again, I really hope French people do that. I'd love to think there's a guy in Paris right now who was approached by an American on the street today. He's came up to me and said, Excuse us, can you tell me how to get to Ar Eiffel Tower? Because we don't know where we are and we're a little bit lost right now. We've been here for hours. And he's at home with his family. He's like, I was on the street today. This American man came up to me. He said, uh, Bow down, can I, can I, can I, burger. 
Bounce down, get out, fries. Bounce down, get out. Woohoo! <laughs> and you know what? I've realised where I get this habit from of making noises of a language and then dropping in an occasional word I understand. The Swedish chef from The Muppet Show. <laughs> At which point I have to stop because most people turn to the person next to them and do their own Swedish chef impersonation, which only has in it the words hurdy gurdy. Hurdy gurdy, hurdy gurdy. I thought that's how Swedish people spoke. I was shattered the first time I saw the Olympics when I learnt that the Swedish national anthem doesn't go, Ye borskern den hern mitti he, ye borskern hern binden hern burk burk burk. It must have been the weirdest show to watch on television in Sweden because they actually had The Muppet Show in Sweden, but in English with Swedish subtitles. <laughs> and they speak English. They would have understood every word. I was watching there as Kermit the Frog pops up, welcome to The Muppet Show, and now it's time for the Swedish chef. And they would have been, oh, Hans, Lars, come quickly. <laughs> the funny man will be speaking Swedish. <laughs> What the hurdy-gurdy is he saying? 